So we decided we do not take the roof. But we're, uh, we are in Washington DC, so that's why we thought we we're gonna take the scenic route. The scenic route. Big A. Rich is with me. Hello there. Rich Mulholland. Right, my friend. Yeah, Give man. a little bit of your, your, your background as an introduction so that these guys... So, uh, I've run a business for 20 years and ironically I've run a business about making great presentations, great videos and things like that, but I, I rarely make them myself. I deliver presentations on the stage and I write uh, various magazines and uh, uh, blogs and things. But it's quite amazing that I was stuck in the legacy thinking of because I always shared uh, via text and via typing. Uh, that's how I was going to continue sharing going forward and it's been a bit of a step for me to slay that legacy to move forward uh, towards a video a new channel a new medium uh, but it's a challenge I'm relishing and really looking forward to you're a professional keynote speaker this is something I want to like learn and grow in and I want to share some of the insights you learn on stage what makes a talk really strong my favorite talks certainly weren't the ones I did. I've done a few TEDx's and one small talk on the main stage at TED. Uh, that particular talk, it was in 2005, it was called First Impressions Lie. And it's a principle around the fact that, uh, you know, people are always telling you something like, uh, uh, you know, you never, don't get a second chance to make a first impression. But I, I think that's a flaw. I don't think it's true. And I'm happy to share a link to the talk and you can watch it and things. Right. My point is that what makes a powerful talk is if it's something that pisses you off. I think we often speak about, a lot about our passion, but uh, in general, from a presentation point of view, if you start from something that frustrates you, if you can make your audience share that frustration, uh, then it's easy to get passionate about it. It's actually trickier to be passionate about things you love because everything works and everything's nice. And it's the flaw people make. You know, that Confucius quote that says, do what you love and you never work a day in your life. I think it's crap. I think we need to uh, find stuff that frustrates us and change it. And that gives you meaning and purpose. And if you can take that thinking onto a stage and, and talk about things that upset you, make it upset the, the audience as well, you know, create an itch, and then you can provide a scratch at the end of it, that creates a talk with meaning. Nice. So, so start from a position of frustration for you. And if you can get them to share it, I really believe you're onto a great start. What is a good question to start a conversation? So. I shared with you my idea when I go to a party, I want a deeper connection to the people I talk to. So I have two questions. First is, how do you know the host? So that's the most likely the one thing we have in common, the host, because we got invited. And the second question I always ask is, why do you do what you do? So why do you do what you do? And what are your good questions? So I, I do what I do because, <laughs> and without repeating, uh, I used to be a roadie, I used to tour with bands, Iron Maiden, Def Leppard, I was a lighting designer. And uh, when I did corporate work, we would do these big shows, big lighting, big staging things for our clients. But uh, if, if, if the, the guy wasn't passionate about speaking, it didn't matter how big a show it was, it was crap. And I realized that I loved lighting, sound and AV, but I hated bad presentations. And because I hated it enough, I thought that was an opportunity to change something. With regards to asking good questions, uh, my favorite question to ask somebody is, where would you rather be if you weren't here? Uh, and the reason for that is that often at these kind of networking functions and cocktail functions and weddings and things like that, mm -hmm. it's amazing how often people would rather not be there. I think about the last time you said yes to something. Oh, I can't wait to go. I'd love to. Uh, yeah, of course, I'll come along. I can't wait for it. And then the day gets closer and closer and you find yourself saying, why did I say yes to this? And I work under the premise that everybody else, two hours before that event, were thinking, oh, I'm not in the mood for this. And when you ask somebody where they'd rather be and what they'd rather be doing, uh, you get an instant insight into their hobby or obsession. For me, it would be tabletop board gaming or it would be uh, riding my motorcycle or obviously just spending great time with my wife and kids. But um, uh, it, it gives you immediate insight into where their obsessions and passions are and I think right. that's worth learning. Uh, it's also a great way of finding shared context that you may otherwise miss. If you didn't ask me something like that, I'd never let on that I play tabletop games. And somewhere in every room is another guy who likes that stuff. Yeah. And it would be a pity to miss that. I love that. So now you have three awesome questions, a lot of background. And I would say we should make one promise because Rich is traveling a lot. And since you're now starting your YouTube channel and get out there, 
we promise you guys we make another video together on the road with some fun stuff to share and a lot of experience how yeah. about that awesome sounds great perfect cool my friend we need That's a great. head for breakfast <laughs> <laughs> so thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe if you like that i will link rich's channel below as well and his pages and all that stuff he does tremendous talks so uh follow him he's a great guy have a great week i think we need to get grab an uber right shit 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 <laughs>